Happy Sabbath. Good morning. Ooh, that was beautiful. Praise God that we are all here today honoring, I mean, worshiping God our Lord, right? Amen. I just want to uh, thank you all for coming here today and worshiping the Lord with us. Uh, everybody online, thank you for tuning in with us here to worship our Lord God. Um, we have a few announcements, and bear with me, there's quite a few here today, okay? All right. Our, what do I call that? Our, our, what do I call that? Our theme for this, uh, for this whole month is, uh, the month of June is Spiritual Milestone. And we were blessed last Sabbath with uh, Brother Glenn's uh, message about his milestones. And, um, and hopefully we can, uh, we had a good blessing from that one. Today again, we also have, still have our Brother Glenn. And today he's going to talk about honoring our graduates. Next Sabbath will be our brother Eric Magdaleno talking about <laughs> Father's Day. And the Sabbath following will also be our very own Andrew Pangilinan talking about our, uh, having our communion service. Uh, communion service, again, is a time, it's a mini baptism, right? It's a mini baptism where we ask God to cleanse us, yeah. right? To, to be one with us, uh, to be able to cleanse us from all our sins uh, and, uh, and be able to join our supper, our, our what do you call that? Our, to have our the Lord's, Lord's supper. supper with it. Okay? All right, next one. The well. The well in our back are for our tithes and offerings. Uh, uh, we have a well in the back where we put all our tithes. We don't pass around the plate around. Um, if, the, if the Holy Spirit has impressed you to uh, assist us in, in the ministries of this church, the well is in the back. And for those who are unable to come and put, physically put your tithes and offerings into our well, you can also go to our website, wellspring.org. And our wellspring.org, it's, it's, it's been updated to show uh, somewhere in the middle line there, there is a little button that says Go Giving Online. And it's going to show something very similar to our tithe envelope where it's going to do has all those little breakdowns in there. And um, if you have a ministry that you want, that the Lord has impressed you to put it in, where your uh, tithes and offerings will be, it's all in there. Uh, before, you used to have a 3% fee, but praise God, there is no more fee. So 100% of your giving will all go to that ministry. No fee will go to the church, uh, no fee will go to the bank or whatnot, okay? All right, so it's 100% all goes to all the ministries that we are, it's going to be going to. Um, adult Sabbath school starts at 9.30 in the morning. Yes, it's a little early, but 9.30 in the morning. And we had an awesome time this morning, did we not? Amen. We were talking about our brother <laughs> Joseph here and uh, the, the way he had to struggle to, to get to his position. Um, if you have any, if you guys need any more stu study guides, actually I don't have any more study guides, but we only have two more Sabbaths to go till the next quarter. So let me know if you guys need a Sabbath school lesson next quarter, please call me. Or you can get the um, digital format at ssnet.org. G, 408-668-59, okay, it's been corrected, thank you. Ah, our junior PowerPoints is being led by our sister Eliza. Are we having a blessing there, kids? Yes, we are, right? We are definitely having a blessing there. Yeah, I got a thumbs up there, uh, two thumbs up. All right, thank you, sister, uh, sister Jasmine. Um, if you want, if you, you are able to come over here to enjoy the, uh, what do you call that, the get together, but if you are not able to and want to join us still online, uh, you can go through us with the Zoom, with, through Zoom, and the Zoom ID in the passcode is online. Go ahead and take a picture of that one. And also, is there a website where we can get the lessons as well? Junior points. Junior points lesson. Junior PowerPoints. Junior PowerPoints. Just go and search that in the Google, right? <coughs> All right. And we can grab it from there. Aha, uh -huh. Bible marking class. I did not go to the first one, but I heard it was a blessing to those who went. Uh, it, there will be one, it's a, every second Sabbath, right? Every yes. second Sabbath, so today's the second Sabbath. Uh, it will be right after our fellowship lunch, all right? If, if you are here, we, here is where we learn, uh, Sister Cook, right? All right, and she will be uh, conducting that, that, that lesson, uh, that way how to find words or find a so verses in the word, in a specific topic. Correct. All right. Right after the Bible marking, we will also have a Bible study at 1.30. I know it's one right after the other, but Bible study is a form of worship, is it not? 
Bible study is a form of worship. And today we're going to be learning about Christ's object lesson through our sister White's messages. Um, the first one we can talk about today, chapter one, teachings about the parables. All right, that will be at 1.30. Don't be late. Prayer meeting every Wednesday at 7.30. Uh, we have a Zoom ID there that you can also join. Uh, join uh, Zoom ID and the passcodes. And it's every Wednesday at 7.30. If you guys need to get a contact, please contact Florence Quinones. I don't see her number there, though. But if you want to get that link automatically to you on your phone, contact Florence there. Um, 408-891-0531, I believe the phone number is. 0531, yes. Okay. Prayer for our families. Every week we have this prayer, uh, a prayer through our prayer ministry here. And last week we had our very own, the Kerners. Mm -hmm. No, it was Glenn and Florence. Is it Glenn and Florence? <coughs> yes. I was praying for... We, okay. were the, we were the week before the that. The week before that? Okay. So it was... <laughs> but thank you for the prayers. <laughs> Florence and Glenn, I pray that the, uh, the blessings from above uh, came down and they gave you the blessings that you need. So um, I'm going to go ahead and pick... Am I going to be the one picking the... Okay. You, I'm you going may. For, the, for next... For this week... Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Shake. There you go. It's not going to much help because they're all <laughs> flat. <staggered. laughs> so I'll go and grab one. And the family that we're going to be praying for this week, it will be. Oh, it even has a diamond back there. A diamond clip. Charlotte and her families. Charlotte mm -hmm. and our families. Definitely, we'll need, we need prayers for them as well. We all need a prayer, but definitely for Sister Charlotte and her family. Please think about them. Amen. Ah, 40 days of prayer. Uh, as you can see, what do you see there? The last date, June 11, which is today. today right. Um, you can s <laughs> just because it's the last day doesn't mean your prayer won't count. So please... <laughs> Please go and go to the website on the bottom, revivalandreformation.org, 40 days to join in that prayer meeting, okay? 40 days of prayer. Next one, Health and Healing Crusade. Now, this is going to be held in Lodi, so if you guys want to make a better health and healing for yourself and for those around you, and you want to join this group, if you're around there, please come by at the Lodi Great Festival grounds, okay? Free. That, and it, yeah, thank you. It's free. No one, no. It's a, it's a little get-together. It's a festival at the grounds. It's a series of lectures. It's a festival that they have. A series of lectures on our health and general. And they have chairs and whatnot there for, for them? Huh? Do they have chairs for them to sit? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it, it's a, a seminars. Seminars. And it's free. Oh, no. <laughs> Praise God uh, for heal, uh, health and healing. These are all going to be Bible-based information anyway, right? Praise God. All right, next one, SoCal Light, SoCal Light. It's two days, okay, July 16 and July 23, between 9 o'clock until 5.30. Also, uh, this will be at SoCal. Um, I think lunch, I would call it's it. served. Lunch is served free as well, right? Okay. Oh, man, we are blessed, are we not? SoCal Light, I said only two days. Oh, I want to get a census. Is anybody planning to go? To yes. either, either one? Because we're planning. We got yes. one. We got Thanks. four, <clears throat> five. We got about six. Okay. To both of them, yes, or just to one of them? Both. We need to get an idea because we need to, if, if we're going to be closing the ch one of the days of, of the church or whatnot. And also, I need to know who's... Who needs a ride? Do we, do we need anybody who needs a ride to go to Soka Light? Just be, you know, just be, it's it's summer. People want to go to the beach. The road will be traffic that day, so maybe a carpool might be a very good idea. So just just think about that, okay? All right, so I got about six people going. All right, July 16 and July 23 between 9 to 5:30. Hopefully, it won't be too hot. Is there anything else? Any other thoughts there? Any other announcement I've missed? 
Okay. I think just the speakers for those Sabbaths. The first Sabbath is Carlton Bird. Okay. Um, I think he's a well-known speaker. Central. Breath of Life, right? Yes. And then the second Sabbath is John Bradshaw. John Bradshaw. So okay. From yes, Israel and from, from Canada. So <laughs> powerful speaker. So it will be a good time to go. It will be a good blessing. Amen. Okay. Let's go ahead and start our worship <coughs> together with an opening prayer. Ooh, Lord God, thank you so much, Father, for your goodness and grace upon us this morning, Father. We have been blessed by our lesson studies. We have been blessed by our brothers and sisters being here with us. But most of all, Father, we are blessed because we are in your presence, dear Lord. Thank you so much again, Father, for inviting us this morning. We pray, Father, that our talents and our our they've given to us, Father, bring glory and honor to your name this morning. We pray, Father, that to those who are still on their way, may they be here safely. Bring them here safely, Father. And we pray, Father, that today is a new day for all of us. May your name be praised. May your name be honored. May you also forgive us of all our sins this morning as we worship you in, in, in truth and in, in truth and in, in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Be seated. People are often eager to tell you what success looks like. What education, what experiences, what networking and resources you need in your pursuit of happiness. But this is my deepest prayer for you. May you learn to harness your energies toward your passion. May you remember that true strength is found in gentleness. May you keep your word even when it's hard. May you find the good in yourself and see the good in others. May you keep in mind that everyone is fighting their own battle, and the greatest gift you can give is a kind word. May you fight the urge to be in a hurry, knowing that time is a non-renewable resource. May you find ways to bring peace into your relationships. May you know and experience the fullness of joy. May you feel no and share love with everyone, because without it, life is just noise. These are your credentials. This is how you are known. Let these traits be your calling card. May the seeds you've planted continue to bear fruit for endless seasons ahead. So now I'm calling in on our graduates this morning. I would like to call on Michelle Taviolo, Doctor of Optometry. Oh, these are all milestones in your young lives. Amen? Uh, what an, a great accomplishment for our children. Wow, they were such a baby like me <laughs> many years ago. And we're calling on Austin. I think he's not here today. He is uh, a graduate of Bachelor in Science, Mechanical Engineer. <laughs> and I think um, Tiffany, she'd be here in about a few minutes. Um, <laughs> she graduated with BS Biology, concentration in physiology. Whoa, you know, there's <laughs> our young people are going ahead of life, amen? And our youngest graduate is Kai <laughs> from <laughs> kinder to first grade, okay? Uh, these are their accomplishment or milestone in their, his young life. Come on, Sky, come over here, because we are going to pray for you. Uncle Mike is going to pray for our graduates. I'm sure um, God is going to lead you, and God is leading you into the life that you have created for yourself. May God be praised in whatever you do. I think Sky's bashful. <laughs> not coming. Okay. I just didn't play with it. Let's pray. Father God, we are so grateful, Lord, to have these young people in our lives, to watch them from childhood up, Lord, and to nourish them in any way that we could, Lord, and now to see them grown and through college. Father, we just ask your blessings upon them as they go out into this world, Lord, seeking work, seeking you, Father, through their work. Lord God, we ask that you'll watch over them, keep them safe, Father, as you do all of us, Lord. Help us, Father, to 
daily remember them in our prayers, Father, as they go out this day. Father God, we pray for Sky as he moves into first grade, Lord. We pray that you'll give him uh, <laughs> calmness, Lord, if that's possible, uh, and help him to focus on his first grade studies, Lord, and help him to continue on in learning. Father, we pray for Austin and for Rochelle, Lord, as they go out. Help them, Father, and Tiffany as well, Lord, yes. Father, help them to share you with others, Lord, and their opportunities, Father. Help, help others to see you through them as they, uh, as they do their jobs. And just bless them, Father, in whatever endeavor they, they choose to go into. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And we will have a small cake later. This one little thing makes all the difference. Hey guys, it's me again, Douglas. And today I wanted to talk to you about this one little thing that can change everything. This one little idea. And that is, instead of doing what we do for ourselves, we do those things for God. And when we change who we do these things for from ourselves to God, everything in our life lines up and becomes the way God wants it to be. Now, if you're going to do something for someone, it's it's important to know who they are, right? Like if I wanted to do something nice for my mom, I might get her some flowers. But because I know my mom, I know that she's allergic to a kind of flower called mums, which is kind of funny because my mum is allergic to mums. But yeah, if I want to do something nice for my mom, I'd get her some flowers, but not mums. Because I know she's allergic. And so it's important that we read our Bibles and we pray and we go to church and we learn as much as we can about who God is so that we can know the things that we should do for him and how we should do those things for him. If you've got a wrong idea about who God is, you can end up doing some pretty terrible things in God's name. And there are some things that God just never wants us to do, right? But it is kind of surprising how many of the things we do we can do for God. Like when I said we should start doing things for God instead of for ourselves, you might have gotten really worried like, oh man, I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't do this and that and this and that and all, all kinds of things that we like to do. But the truth is a lot of the things that we do, you know, kind of for ourselves, we can keep doing. It's just that when we live our lives for God instead of for ourselves, those things have a purpose. Raking leaves is, you know, raking leaves. But raking leaves for God, that's important. Sometimes I think we get kind of hung up on like, doing something big for God. And not that God doesn't want us to do big things for him, but I know that God wants us to do everything for him. You know, if we think, I'm just going to do something big for God and then and then do nothing else for God, that's, that's not the right way of doing things. God wants us to do everything for him. And when we do that, even the small things kind of become big things. Playing sports, hanging out with your friends, doing your homework. All these things can be done for God. So my challenge to you guys today is that you would do what you do for God. That you would find the things in your life that God just doesn't want you doing at all and stop doing those things. But then start looking at all the other things in your life and saying, how can I do this for God? You can do all the things you do for God. And when you do, it changes everything. Whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. Story and would like to pray for our children on he here and online. Let's bow our heads. Our great, gracious God, we are so grateful for giving us children. We thank you, God, for teaching us as parents to guide and to teach them in the right purpose of life, of their lives. We know, Lord, that. In all things that we do, we do it all for your glory. And may we teach our children to have that kind of mentality, to have the right picture of who you are, the one that loves them so much, the one that pursues them for the things that is best for them. And Lord, thank you so much for your continued pursuit in our children's lives, especially getting to know who you are, the true picture of who you are, a loving, merciful God 
that loves them so much. Thank you. Thank you, God, for your continued teaching, humbling them, their hearts, <clears throat> so that they can be taught by you through their parents, through their elderly, through a good example for our for the people around them. And Lord, we know that you said that um, you called each one of us according to your purpose. And may we glorify you in all that we do. And especially our young people, Lord, to know you and to have that relationship with you. And thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering our prayers. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. Amen. Amen. As we sing our <clears throat> song of meditation, to ask for the Holy Spirit to give us the ability to turn our eyes to Jesus is like God's word says um, spirit is willing but the flesh is weak right can't do anything good without God's help because even our righteousness is like filthy rags so as we sing the song ask for the Holy Spirit to help us to turn our eyes to Jesus
us, Lord. Let's turn our eyes to you. If you're able to, please kneel down with me as we seek the Lord in prayer. Our most gracious, loving, wonderful Father in heaven, we thank you again, Father, for your goodness and mercies upon us again here this day. They have brought us through a week of trouble, some and troublesome and, and ways that just goes in wrong direction, Father, but we know who is in control. Father God, we thank you again for the Sabbath that you've given to us. We thank you, Father, that you've brought us here to worship your holy name. Help us, Father, to turn our eyes to you. May your name be praised, Father, here again this morning. We want to pray, Father, also for our brothers and sisters that are sick among us. We also want to pray, Father, for our sister Charlotte and her family. May you put your hands upon them, Father. Know, let them know that you are there, loving them, caring for them, watching over them. Help them feel your presence, Father, in their midst. We pray, Father, also for Brother Ramel. Father, you know his condition. By only miracle, Father, by only by miracle can this happen, Father. So I just ask, Father, that you please watch over them. Watch over their families as well, dear Lord. Those who are watching over him, please, Father, help them to have kindness, willingness, to help our brother out, Father, to make him better. I want to pray also, Father, for a dear close friend of mine, dear Lord. We go to his house for every year for July 4th. You know who he is, Father. And I just want to pray, Father, for his well-being. He found out the sickness. But only you, Father, know the truth about it. So, Father God, pour your hands upon them. Watch over them, care for them, and keep them safe, dear Lord. I pray, Father, also for this church, the leaders of this church, dear Lord, that you please guide them, Father. Guide them in a way that they represent you. May this church be a beacon to this community, dear Lord. So help them out. May they walk humbly with you, dear Lord, and present you correctly. Thank you again, Father, for this moment in time, for hearing our prayers, Father, for we ask this in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes from Exodus chapter 4, verses 2. <laughs> and the Lord said to him, what is in your hand? And he said, a rod. <laughs> Please bow your heads for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for gathering us all here today to listen to your word. Please give Papa Glenn the wisdom to speak your message. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Oh, that was weak. Let's try it again. Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Welcome to Wellspring and welcome to our guests that's here today. Thank you for gracing us with your presence. I uh, also would like to uh, welcome our viewers online. And um, I just pray that uh, today's message will be um, an addition to the blessings that you already received today. Um, our scripture reading was 
um, as uh, spoken by Jasmine was in the book of Exodus chapter 4 verse 2 and it says so the Lord said to him what is that in your hand and he said a rod okay um, I'd like to thank Jasmine for uh, reading and praying for this message today uh, I can remember that uh, when she was born, she was so tiny and so cute. She's still cute, right now. <laughs> and and that was 11 years ago. We used to uh, babysit her on Fridays because uh, Florence uh, and I are on day off on Fridays, and so um, I it's always a. Uh, uh, um, special uh, time that we can uh, look forward to her with her and taking her to um, uh, fast foods and to the merry-go-round and all those little things you know she was first scared to go into that merry-go-round because uh, she she see that everything is turning around and so uh, I had to go there and accompany her and give her that confidence and um, after a few rounds, she was on her own, and she doesn't need me anymore. So it's good that uh, we see these uh, young people growing up, and um, it's, it's quite a blessing uh, for their parents to see them grow and to um, have that desire to um, get involved in church activities. There were questions I left with you uh, to meditate on upon last week. Uh, you remember the title of our message last week? Good answer. Okay. Looking back. And um, the questions I, I left was that um, have you taken time to pause from your busy time or your busy schedule? Time for reflection and look back how God has led you brought you up to this stage of your life? Do you like what you see? Were there significant spiritual milestones that you achieved? If you answered yes, praise the Lord for your progress. Continue your journey with God. But if you answered no, or perhaps maybe, um, probably, uh, don't despair, okay? Maybe now is the time for you to make serious decisions to follow God. And we look back only to remember the things that we learned from the past. Okay. We look back only to know how God has raised us up so many times whenever we fall down. We look back and be convinced that God never left us. God is still with you now, tomorrow, and until our last breath. Okay. So while we are alive and able to, to do things God's um, way and his purpose in us, waste precious moments no more. Start today to walk with God and you will find peace hope, and the gift of eternal life. Let us pray. With heads bowed down and eyes closed. Almighty Father in heaven who are in heaven, we humbly plead for your presence at this time. Please accept us just as we are, sinners saved by your grace. We invite the Holy Spirit to this church in our midst that we may feel his presence in our hearts, in our minds to receive your much needed blessings today. As water to the thirsty refers, refresh and fill our dry and empty vessel. Grant us strength to move forward, to be victorious and overcomers as we abide by the Holy Spirit's instruction. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen and amen. 
This month's theme, as mentioned earlier, is the spiritual milestones. Last week, we talked about looking back and reflecting how God has led us until now. When God became real to us in our lives, what we have learned from the past and how God equipped us and continued to equip us as we face today's challenges and in the future. Today, our message title is Moving Forward, with emphasis in honoring the graduates. As I watched the presentation earlier, the video, the recognition of our, mem our, our graduates, it's so heartwarming to see how they have gone through with these challenges, this, this milestone in their life. Okay. Um, whether you have reached a significant spiritual milestone or not in this stage of your life, I encourage you to move forward with God. I would like to acknowledge that part of today's message uh, was taken from a sermon by uh, Jack Whitehead. Uh, he is a Baptist who preached uh, this sermon entitled, What's in Your Hand? That was back in March 28, 2003. Okay. Our accomplishments get recognized by certain form of, of appreciation. It can be in the form of applause or expressing favorable comments and commendations like, great job, the way to go, or keep up the good work, and many other things. It is an affirmation that is complemented with positive acknowledgments. When we follow instructions or rule, we are rewarded with acceptance and is elevated to the next step. Such is the normal worldly process. In education, we do not, we do our best to meet certain requirements and pass those requirements successfully. As a testament to our accomplishments, we graduate because we successfully completed a course of study or training. Same process goes from elementary, high school, college, master's degree, and even to the doctorate degree. We equipped ourselves through rigorous studies, attending classes, passing those very hard tests, submitting reports, um, those who uh, excel in higher education uh, prepares their dissertations, defending it. We have in this church a uh, number of graduates that uh, we recognize today. Okay. And um, we are so thankful that God is continually uh, blessing them and guiding them. Of equal importance to this special occasion, I would like to acknowledge the parents and loved ones of our graduates for all, for all their love, their care and sacrifices that brought these precious souls to where they are now. Congratulations, graduates and parents and loved ones. Parents, loved ones, parents, loved ones, works had hard, very hard to put their children into higher education because they love them. They want what is best for them. As mentioned earlier, they sacrificed pretty much everything for their children. Who wouldn't? It's your flesh and blood. Where do you think they got this idea? It was from God. Because God first loved us. In Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5, when God created the prophet Jeremiah, it says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to, a na to the nations. God foreordained us for a specific purpose. Each and every one of us was created for a specific task, a specific purpose to 
give God his glory. God is the almighty architect. In Genesis 1, 1, it tells us that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He makes everything work according to his divine plan. He never makes mistakes. He is perfect. In James 1, chapter, seven, uh, James chapter 1, verse 17, it tells us, every good, every good, and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Isn't that wonderful? We serve a mighty God. We serve a God that is perfect. God provides anything and everything we need to succeed, to glorify him. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. We were born, we were created in this world not to enjoy, not to um, um, satisfy ourselves, but to uh, glorify God and to help others. The story of Moses is one clear example of how God manifests his love and his power. It is God's way of equipping man to move forward towards the attainment of his spiritual milestone. In our scripture reading from the book of Exodus chapter 2, I'll say it again. So the Lord said to him, what is that in your hand? And Moses said, a rod. God uses the simplest of his creation to achieve his will. A rod is a piece of long, straight wood. Others call a staff or a shepherd's staff to direct the sheep to a certain direction. It is also a tool, a weapon to protect the sheep from danger. A rod signifies authority. It is a tool for discipline. As we remember in the book of Pro Proverbs, chapter 13, verse 24, spare the rod and spoil the what? What does that mean? It tells us that if we do not discipline our child, you are training a future criminal. Okay. An undisciplined child is most likely a successful criminal in the future. And so you discipline the child with love. Okay. A background of this event that um, um, about this verse tells us about the time when God told Moses to lead God's people to leave Egypt after 400 years of bondage. God had equipped Moses for this specific responsibility from the day he was born. He was brought up by his mother, Jochebed, under the Egyptian environment until the age of 40. It's a little bit ironic to see how this thing uh, unfolded. At that time, um, there was a decree that all the uh, children or the boys born in those times are to be killed. And somehow, um, God found a way to save Moses, and he was um, found uh, floating on a crib along the Nile River, and the, um, the daughters of Pharaoh found him and adopted him. And uh, so happened that the mother was around that area at the time, and um, Miriam, the, bro the sister of uh, Moses, approached the daughter, the first daughter, uh, if she wants a babysitter to take care of. Her. And the uh, daughter's Pharaoh, the Pharaoh's daughter, said yes. And um, she gets paid, taking care of her own child, 
in a nice environment. What a good arrangement, huh? Yes. But that was God's plan, right? And so in those 40 years, um, Moses has been trained, equipped, and um, given all the necessary skills and experiences to uh, prepare him for a major task. But something happened along the way. He saw an Egyptian mistreating one of his uh, fellow Hebrew, and um, he killed it. And thinking that uh, he can get away with it, he thought that everything was okay, but he found out later that uh, the secret was out, and he had to, f to leave Egypt and to um, uh, go to Midian. He stayed 40 years there. He got married to Zipporah and uh, had two children. And uh, in a way, he was um, technically retired, you know. <laughs> but God said, not yet. You have a major task to do. Okay. And so at 80 years of age, God called Moses. And in um, Exodus chapter 3, we read the story of the burning bush, okay? Not the President Bush, okay? <laughs> it's the burning bush that did not uh, burn at all because God was there, okay? And so God told Moses, gave instruction that uh, he should lead his people out of Egypt. And... Um, at first, he was reluctant, okay, because he feels that he was inadequate for that uh, great responsibility. And um, he tried to bargain with the Lord, said that, um, am I really that qualified, you know? We do that a lot, right? We, we try to negotiate our, um, our way out when God asks us to do something. But in a loving way, God continued to explain to us, pursue us that, okay, I can answer any questions that you have, but you still have to do it my way. <laughs> you know. And so he did. Okay. And um, he actually was um, unsure if the people that he is going to lead will uh, understand him. And so um, he asked for some kind of a proof. And God said, what is in your hand? And he said, it's a rod. But does God really don't know what is in his hand? He knows, right? He was just trying to make a point that um, I have already prepared you. This is the tool that you can use to lead your people out of Egypt. And so he um, was given a miracle when God told Moses to um, put down the, uh, the stick or the, the rod. It, it turned into a serpent. So what are you going to do when you see a uh, six, seven feet uh, serpent? You want to run, right? And that's what he did. And so God told him, now pick up the serpent by its tail. If, if you are uh, really smart, you're not going to do that. <laughs> you never touch a snake by the tail because it can get you right away or it can go over you, okay? But because he trusted God, he had faith in God. After all those 80 years uh, dwelling um, uh, under God's guidance, he trusted God. And so when he trusted God, the serpent became a rod again. And so, 
it's just uh, a way for God to really convince us that um, there is a plan for us that we should follow him. When we look at um, the life of Moses, um, he was having a hard time believing that God can still use him because of uh, what he did when he was 40 years of age. He thought that he was done, okay? that God is through with him. But that's not God. You know, he gives us chances after chances to be able to um, uh, learn from our mistakes. You would think that Moses would have learned his lesson by now, but Moses has not quite realized how awesome God is. Will you take what you have and give it to the Lord? Someone is going to say to you, brother, I just don't have very much to offer to the Lord. I tell you today, God is not looking for someone who has a lot. God is looking for someone who is willing to use what God has provided them to accomplish his will. The Lord is asking, what's that in your hand, Christian? Remember the story of the widow's might? Little becomes much when you place it on the Lord's hand. I remember young David when the people of God were being taunted by the Philistines, by this giant warrior named Goliath. This young boy was just a lad. He was not a warrior at all, and yet he answered the call. What's that in your hand, David? Well, it's just a sling and a few walks. But what did he do with it? In the name of the Lord, he said, that uncircumcised Philistine shall fall. And he did. What's that in your hand, Andrew? Jesus asked his disciple. Well, it's just a few fish and some bread from a young boy. Give it to me, said Jesus, and I will feed 5,000 people. What's that in your hand, Paul? Well, it's just some writing tools. But I'm going to write great things about you, my Lord. What's that in your hand, Sky? Well, it's just a small tool for kids, but I can find a way to fix things. I remember when um, Sky used to stay with us um, because of his uh, excessive energies. Um, he had to be put to time out a lot. And so one way of giving him time out was to put him in the garage where it's dark. Okay. And um, we thought that um, that would teach him a lesson. But in a few minutes later, we found him back inside the house. So he was able to find a way by opening the garage uh, door, going to the backyard and into the patio. And then there he was looking at us. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What's that in your hand, Tiffany? It's a microscope I use to study organisms, the body parts and their functions. What's that in your hand, Austin? Well, it is a wrench. It's a plier and a screwdriver that I use to arrange mechanical parts and analyze how it works together and achieve something. What's that in your hand, Richelle? It is my optical tools that I use to examine the eyes of people and prescribe the appropriate eyeglasses. What's that in your hand, 
Christians? Well, it's the Bible. But I'm going to read, study, and pray on it. I'm going to ask God to guide me to all righteousness. What's that in your hand? Well, it's a microphone. And I'm going to sing about Jesus today. What's that in your hand? It is a musical instrument, and I'm going to play it for the Lord. What is that in your hand? What is a checkbook? And I'm going to use it to further the gospel of Jesus Christ. It does not matter what you got, how much or how little it was or is. What matters most is you give it to the Lord so he will be able to do magnificent things that you could never imagine. Little becomes much when you place it in the master's hand. If Moses had not obeyed God and threw down the stick, he would not have seen the awesome power of God. How many times have we failed to answer the call of God and missed out on the miracles the Lord wants us to be a part of? The rod parted the sea. It brought water out from the rock. What's that on your hand, sinners? Yes, you. That means all of us. Eternal life, freely given by my Savior Jesus. Will you accept it? God gives us all the chances after chances, the ability to choose to accept him or reject him, to obey him or do things our way. He made it so simple that there would be no excuses in heaven as to why you reject him. Jesus Christ died so that you and I could be saved. Through his blood, our immeasurable sin debt was paid off. He traded his eternal life for our eternal death. It was not a fair trade. It was grace. There is no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. What's in your hand? And I will use it to glorify God. I ask you again, my friend, what's in your hand? Let us pray. Our loving Father in heaven, we are once again encouraged and blessed to receive today's message. You are our great provider. You equipped us to serve you and others. Grant us strength each day as we stay connected with you. Empower us to use the spiritual gifts that you give us to share the love of Jesus to others. We pray for our graduates to use their knowledge, their skills, and experiences to serve God as they move forward in careers to better and greater spiritual milestones in their life, now and in the future. Amen.